Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally on. Kako treba? With sound. Oh, yeah. Yes. America, America, Senya Thank you, Marina. Thank you, Solana. Oh, yes. Dobro veče, dobro došli. Prijatelji moji. Ha, yes. Pa kaže, čuj! Čadeto! O, jes! Amerika, Amerika, zemlja velika Ali metar moga sela, Amerika zemlja Now you see me, you hear me A i polako krećemo Ali metar moga sela, Amerika zemlja Tonight, ladies and gentlemen we will be joined by this man right here, Surgeon General. Stay tuned. Oh. Yes. 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 This week, we are going live with Surgeon General. You know, Surgeon General? No, he's not part of United Serbs. He's not part of Mladost. He's definitely not part of Mladost Srbadija. Right? No, no, nema, no, no, nema. Blađi on čovjek. Much younger he is. Kaže, prijatelji moji, we'd like to go ahead and welcome him to our show. Surgeon General. Dobro večer, Srđane, i dobro došlo, prijatelji moji. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thanks for coming in, my friend. Surgeon General is, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, I'll tell you right now, right? Shit. They, I'm sure they have no clue, bro. No clue. Fill them in. <laughs> Born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and he hopes to begin his stand-up comedy tour in the fall of 2020, pending restrictions due to COVID-19. So, Surgeon General began uploading his videos YouTube on the YouTube, pla on the YouTube platform about four years ago, and has since made a name for himself worldwide, thanks to his creativity and Persistence. Još jednom srđene, dobrodošao and welcome, brate moj. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, as I mentioned, uh, you were born and raised here in Chicago. And, you know, desu tvoj, odakle su tvoj? So, um, yes, like you said, I am actually first generation, born and raised in Chicago. My folks are from two cellos that are near Bielina. And by near, I mean two mountains and one donkey right away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they came in the 80s, and then down the line, I came around, and there you go. Been here ever since. You know, Sergeant, I think a lot of people, I think it's very creative. Uh, Sergeant General, right? How did you come up with the name? Because I, I know your name isn't Generalovich. That's right. It's not, and thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, basically, the name came about in school here. They called me Surgeon because Sergeant was just not in the cards, it sounded wrong, and it really stemmed from my mom starting that whole surgeon trend, um, like in preschool, kindergarten, 
And I just thought to myself, what's a creative name that plays off my name? And one day Surgeon General just came up. Like I wasn't gonna be like a surgeon, the surgeon, because I have nothing to do with anything medical, nor do I have a degree in medicine. So I felt like this was a better fit. So Jenna, tell me, how did you start doing this? How do you come up with something like this? What triggers the thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. How did it all start? Tell me how that began. So and, and you, we mentioned something about four years ago, you uploading it uh, to the YouTube platform. Did it begin before that maybe? It actually did it. Uh, I'm going to say six, seven years ago, I started doing um, parodies of reality TV moments and shows like Maury. But the quality wasn't up to my expectations and standards, so I just kind of stopped it completely and went about my life. And then I wanted to start back up again um, a couple years later, and then I saw people like Serbian Lessons Guy and other people that are kind of doing um, cultural-type videos. And I'm like, you know what? I can do this too, but put my own spin on it. And just, that pretty much put the fire under me to start doing it. Was it American or, or Serbian? Balkan, whatever the second time around yeah the second time around was uh a belkin theme yes uh it started off with like the first video being growing up with belkin parents uh which was a pretty big hit even back then um and it kind of just went from there what would you say that potentially maybe influenced you to, to go to take this route right um was well, it something back in elementary school was it something in high school did it come up in college? Like when, when did this really take shape? When do you, when do you think it took shape? Well, the whole um, video creation, video producing and hosting that type of thing. Yeah. Um, it actually stems back in high school. I took broadcasting classes as electives and I didn't know what I was getting myself into and eventually fell in love with it. And that kind of carried on into college. Um, I ended up doing radio for internships Um TV and stuff like that. And I, where did you intern? I interned for Kiss FM in Chicago working with Fred and Angie Taylor, our fellow. That's 103 Live. FM. That is. All right. Yes. Just making sure people know. I think right. it's the number one morning show right now, too. It is. It is. All right. Continue. So you started there. So from there, after college, I kind of geared that uh, my love for broadcasting into what I do today. So basically, I not only make these funny, entertaining YouTube videos, um, I actually video produce for a living. So I do any kind of media production from voiceovers to filming to um, content creation, that sort of thing. So Jenna, tell me as far as you start doing this, you do your first video, right? And how do you, how, how was it received? Oh no, be a be a boom, go. Wow. Or was it a slow momentum, you know, to build up? Um, it was definitely a slow momentum because mm -hmm. a, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I've never done something like that before. Mm -hmm. Um, YouTube at that time, I only knew the side of it as a viewer. I didn't necessarily know as a creator. And then I was kind of learning as I went. Um, I would describe the beginning kind of like lighting, uh, like a cigarette lighter, you try to get the flames, like the flames are there, but it's not fully lit just yet. Um, in the beginning, I felt like people liked what I was doing and that kind of pushed me to continue going because I had people texting me and messaging me saying, you're hilarious, like you should do more of this stuff. Uh, you should do this, you should do that. I'm like, okay, if people want to continue seeing it, then I'm going to continue doing it. And you did. I did. Tell me, between the first video that you did and the second, was there a little pause there? You'll be like a mala pausa. Um, at the time when doing research, I found that being consistent really helps because once you have a buzz going, you kind of want to ride the wave. Sure. Um, so then I don't think I waited too long. I want to say it was like a week or so uh, that like the, in between the two videos. Was it difficult to to edit? Was it the, the, the technical issues of video editing. It seems like a headache to me, right? Until you get the hang of it. Was it a bitch? Um, you know what? It was, it, it comes naturally to me because I find that I'm handy when it comes to that type of stuff. Back then I didn't have the resources or the equipment to kind of bring my visions to the forefront, to the fullest. 
So I pretty much made it basic because I saw that a lot of people were making basic videos that kind of skyrocketed. So I'm like, you know what, let me just keep it simple. And I'm like, you know what, I'm bored. Let me take it up a notch. So I got more equipment. I got more programs. I learned a little bit more. I ended up getting a green screen to just kind of advance these videos and do things that haven't been done in this sort of arena with this sort of theme. So, so the, from the beginning, right? Uh, right. You start working on it and you're, you're, you're getting through all these obstacles, right? What was, what would you say is the most difficult part of this whole process of putting a video together? Um, I would say the most difficult part is staying disciplined to get the videos out and really putting it all together because I'm a one man band. I'm doing the job of probably six people like the camera guy, the sound guy, the, <laughs> the screen, like the set setter upper, if that's even a word, right, right. <laughs> set designer, sure. um, the host, the editor, um, the marketer. So it, it really is tough to kind of play all those roles for such a small scale project. I guess you, you could just, say, like I put a lot of effort into it basically. You give yourself deadlines, buddy? I do, um, because if I don't, I feel like I would slack off and forget about it. And I try to make it seem like I'm working on an assignment for real. Um, therefore, I put more effort, effort into it, more time into it, and take it seriously. I pretend like this is like my job. Right. Okay. You know. Well, it's it's it is a it's a hobby. It's a duty at this point. <laughs> Doctor, okay, commander. <laughs> Tell me, as far as videos, how many videos do you think you have now in total? I saw, I saw earlier today and I just started crossing myself uh, <laughs> because I couldn't believe that I spat out 81 videos. To me, that's a lot. I know there are people that YouTubers that do things every day, but it's like vlogs are easier than some of the videos that I've put out there that take a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of components. So I would pat myself in the back for that because <laughs> it is not easy. Sure. And 81 videos, I feel like, is a pretty big accomplishment. Well, it is. Closer to 100. Tu si, brate. You're, what, 19? Yo, Toto? Yeah. Is that by the end of the year? Uh, let's hope so. Those I sure cool. got a lot of time now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's going anywhere. So let's take a look at a quick clip of one of those videos. Uh, let me get that up on the screen. And so going to tell me uh, a little bit about the one we're going to show them right now. So this video is Koto Tamopeva. Basically, um, I'm doing a Balkan music game show. I don't believe anyone's ever done something like that. Sure. Um, I take Google Translate. I put uh, Serbian lyrics in there, translate it to English. I play them the English version. They got to tell me what song it is. So I had a pretty good time, and the contestants had a great time. So take a look. All right, let's take a look. Real simple. Check us out with an Ajib. Baby, you have to show it out. Check it out. Samo minut, molim vas, samo pažnja. There we go. Surgeon General, ladies and gentlemen, Koto Tamo Peva. Enjoy. This game tests your Belkin music knowledge. I'm going to translate Belkin song lyrics to English via Google Translate. The app will tell you the English lyrics, and you have to tell me what Belkin song it is. Now, are you ready? Absolutely. I think I'm an expert when it comes to Balkan music, so uh, let's do this. Do you have your lifeline present? No. He's probably taking a dump. Oh, good. The first clue is All my song is from pain and that song is my life and these glasses around the table my friends give it to her. What? You want to do it oh, again? Oh, not fall, I want that, right? No. Is it Atapovic? Ooh, so close. You be chasho kosto to something so over pies ah that's something. You're missing two words. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> That's the second part of the chorus. I need the first part yeah. of the chorus. Thank it? you. Yes. Next clue. Open your door for me. I'm a knocking man, faithful servant who begs you, a prisoner who loves you, who you queen of my heart. <laughs> what did he say? He said Holly Bixlet. I mean, he's just as old. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, Kravitz is Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. 
I know my fans love Sinan. Sinan. Huh? Sinan. Is it Sinan? Another old schmuck. Shaban? Yes. <laughs> that was mean. Oh, it's Mori, Miss. Yes. Yes. What's the f***ing song? Oh. oh, I love this part. I knew that one. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So that's just a clip of what you did on one of the videos. Another example of your creativity. I don't think we've had that yet. I've never seen that before. Have I've you? never seen that either. So fuck at Debbie Trust. What would you say is your favorite video out of the 81 videos that you have, buddy? Aside from that one that you just played, I thoroughly enjoy doing How Balkan Are You and also How American Are You. Um, and that's because it gives me a chance to talk to random people that I wouldn't necessarily cross paths with or even talk to in everyday life because either we don't hang in the same social circles or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, also, I love the spontaneity of it all. I even though the questions are easy, you never know what the person's going to say. Right. So I just, I just love that. Right. You know, I, I saw the American one. I thought that was very impressive. You, you know, the American guy was very uh, intoxicated. Absolutely. All they all were. <laughs> it, but <laughs> the beauty of, them, of it. One of them was getting them right. He was answering your questions like boom, boom. Mm -hmm. He was on a Uncle Sam. Yeah, but who he was dressed as. Oh, and you, you know. So, all right. What would you say is? Uh, are the subscribers' favorite videos, right? You know, the people that I would say the same. The how Balkan are you? It's like something that people look forward to. They love, they recognize the people that are in them, and they love seeing their friends and family kind of squirm and get the questions wrong. And I feel like it's entertaining for everybody. <laughs> so, how Balkan are you? Is that what you said? Correct. So, let's take a look. Let me see if I can find it. How Balkan are you? Uh, I think I had a prep ready here for you. Um, and this is Chicago Revisited, episode six. So tell me if uh, you're okay with it. And let's play a little clip of it. Absolutely. Let's do it. Happy anniversary, because it's the one-year anniversary of this segment. Here I am at Spirit Fest Chicago, trying to find out how Balkan are you. But before we do that, I just want to show off a prototype from my future online store. Look at that. Samotaco toasted to jelly. Let's go find some contestants, shall we? What if I look stupid? Well, that's the point. You want something? Uh-huh. <laughs> You're getting a little bit too close to the sheet. Uh, uh, Let the games begin. What is one thing you hide in an old cookie tin? Needles. Sewing supplies. Money. I'll accept that. I was looking for sewing supplies. Oh, uh, sewing stuff. That's correct. So you know this. All right, for a vampire facial, they draw your blood and inject this substance in your face. The name of it is this favorite Belkin biscuit cookie. Bitch cough. Plasma. Yeah. Yes. Piss cough? Starts with a P. Yeah. Um... It's not porn this time. Well, the answer is porn. <laughs> no, no, no. I know uh, it's lane, lane biscuits, but I know what well, it is. Well, the answer is porn. Plasma. Plasma. Plasma check. Plasma. Yeah. If roses are red and violets are blue, what is the color of Zorita Brunswick's hair? <laughs> well, here's a better question. Who is Zorita Brunswick? Yeah, oh my god. Oh. Who's hair? That one hurt. Zorita Brunswick. I don't know who that is. Oh, another stake to the heart. <laughs> Say it again. It's like red or purple. It's pink. <laughs> pink. Yes. All right, solve this riddle. Here we go. Hold on. I can be hard as wood or cushioned for the pushing. You can slide your feet right in me when you want to go for a stroll. You can hear me coming from a mile away. What am I? Um, clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. That wears what? A marama. On her feet, bre. Oh, uh, papuche? What kind of papuche? They're wooden. Uh, oh, my. That's not wooden. Elves? <laughs> this isn't f***ing elves at Christmas. Just papuche that are made out of wood that people wear. Oh, wooden shoes. Which are called <laughs> what? <laughs> someone... Oh, clompe. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> at Aposna Slava, you're likely to find this uh, in every dessert. Uh, Here we go. One more. Yeah. Brashna? <laughs> 
right, I got to stop right there. Yeah. We can go on all day with this. So that was, I know that that's a very popular one. I know you did a couple episodes. You did one here in the city. Where, where have you done? How Balkan are you? Um, I did it in Arizona. I did it in Wisconsin. Sure. Um, I also did it virtually, considering we were all quarantined for <laughs> a few months. Um, and I'm hoping to take it in more cities um, when this is all over. Do you have any in mind? Um, I was thinking uh, Pennsylvania, San Diego. San Diego. Bravo. San, um, San Marcos, Molly, to San Marcos. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, Vegas. Cool. And uh, Florida. All right. So you've got options, right? I do. All right. You can always and request. Don't forget, you can always go north of the border. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, sure. Just I got to make sure it's active. Hey, how do you choose who gets on the show? How do you choose who goes on? Honestly, it's either I go after like my cousins and their friends, or they kind of take me to who they think would be a good fit for it. Um, I usually give everyone a heads up to let them know, hey, we're doing this. But just to let you know, you may or may not see yourself in it, depending on how long the video is. And if you get them all right, you're definitely not going to be in it because anybody want to wa watch people get them all right because that's not funny. <laughs> right. It's not. This is, I was dying, bro. Dying. Just, I love that one. That's one of my favorite. Uh, tell me as far as subscribers go, You, how many subscribers do we have on, on the YouTube platform right now? Um, More than 1,500. Wow. Thank Thank you. I remember when we were talking about getting to the thousand, right? And it was yeah. like teeth, man. I was like, come yeah. on, come yeah. on. Somewhere small. You Started know? from the bottom, now we're here. And it's like 996. Like, I so small. You know? Seriously, make a few fake emails just to subscribe, right? Neck and neck. You didn't buy them, did you? No. No, just make sure. Anybody got time or money for that? Your base is the United States and Canada. Toti uh, Baza. Where do you see other people uh, watching from? What other countries are, can you... Uh, Tell us from the insights that you might have. Uh, so uh, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Australia, um, uh, Bosnia, Germany, Macedonia, and the UK. Those are pretty much my biggest people apart from the uh, United States and Canada. Did did your family say something to you? Like, what was your family's reaction to this? Go, hello, Stradio, salute. Well, first, they didn't know. because <laughs> <laughs> How do they not? Usually, if I tell them I like a certain idea they almost would convince me otherwise therefore I wouldn't even do it mm. so I just want to test the waters to see what will float and if it floats great if it doesn't then no big deal you know, I just move on with my life but at first th they thought it was like Zaybansia right. if I can even say that but as people started to stop them at random events saying how much they love it they started to change their thoughts a bit and there was one instance when or a family friend approached my mom and I forgot what event it was. She was saying, yeah, I was having a really like rough patch in my life. And I started watching his videos and kind of lift, lifted my spirits. I'm like, damn, that's pretty deep. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I didn't realize I was making that big of a difference in people's lives like that. How long was it before they did find out? Was it six months, a year? You know, what was? Uh, my mom probably knew about it like a month to two in and my dad didn't know until probably the second year i was doing it <laughs> how many videos were out but oh god i don't even know well here's the thing he's a busy guy when he comes home he just like rots on the couch watching channel nine news and he goes to bed hey oh totally totally so, so was there like an aha moment like like this is this is like, this could work. This, uh huh. Like, what, what, what makes it like, what was, did you have a moment like that or was everything just kind of flowing steady? I did. There are two moments that come to mind. When I started the Hal Belkin Are You, it, it piqued people's interest. But like the next summer, people knew who I was and approached me or it was, were running away from me because they didn't want to be on camera knowing that like what I was doing and what I was there for. Hold on. Did you um, have a hard time? you know, grabbing people or, or is it just now everybody is willing to, you yeah. know, they know, they know what I'm in, what they're in for and what I'm there for. So if you don't want to do it, no big deal. Either they'll nominate someone or they nominate themselves, um, which is great. So it makes things a lot easier than trying to go up to random people, convincing them that I'm not some random person off the street, you know, trying to make them, 
you know, look bad, that's on them at that point. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Another instance that um, would be when someone reached out to me to do a stand-up comedy show for a fundraiser that, that they were doing, I'm like, okay, well, there's more avenues to this and there's more to this than I actually thought rather than just making videos. We, we can do some other things with this. And that brought in things up for me. Doors opened. Sure, opportunities have presented. Right. Themselves. Right. All right, that's cool. So yeah. uh, tell me, did you have a mentor? Can you look I, at someone looking back now and say, this 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 person influenced what I do? Um, There are people like my broadcasting teacher who kind of pushed me to do certain things that I didn't think I would be good at or be interested in. For example, um, in broadcasting, we had a radio unit and we were pretty much recording our mini shows and like commercials. What I didn't know behind the scenes was that my teacher submitted my uh, tape, let's just call it a tape, um, <laughs> to a contest. And I ended up placing, which led me to uh, ABC7 News where I did a boot camp for broadcasting. So it's like people like him were kind of guiding me in the right direction when I was kind of like blind and not taking things seriously, being a high schooler, a teenager and stuff like that. Um, people like uh, Angie Taylor on Kiss FM, who's also Serbian doing things in broadcasting, someone to look up to. Um, but all in all, I admire American comedians for their humor. Um, and I was trying to just connect the dots of like being funny, being like a host of some sort, entertaining people and making people happy. So that kind of helped you out. You got a favorite comedian? Uh, there's a couple of them. I don't even know if they're even active anymore. <laughs> well, one of them is dead. So they're definitely not active. Pretty much out. All right. At this time, and we're going to let everybody know if you have any questions that you might uh, want to ask, Citizen General, you can go ahead and join us on the Got Time page. I'm doing this from three or four different platforms. If you join us on the Got Time question mark Facebook page, I'll be able to put your questions up on the screen and you can ask Citizen those questions, right? So it's uh, facebook.com slash got time 2020. Uh, otherwise, just search got time question mark, and then you can go ahead and ask those questions. And we'll continue with our questions right now. Uh, so there's your name. Tell me, there are many celebrities out there. Anyone you want to be like? Who do you want to like almost mimic to the T? Or maybe that's not the right way of saying it, right? Um, I would say I want to be like a Howard Stern or even like a Jenny McCarthy, where it's like by day you're hosting a radio show, saying what you want, doing what you want without anyone kind of um, censoring you. And by night you're hosting like uh, you're judging on a talent show, just being yourself and having a great old ball. And then you go home. So those two really come to mind because of their personality and all the things that they've done in their career. So and Jenny is from Chicago. So that also helps too. She is. Tell me, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, you do something else besides the videos. What is it that uh, that you do, my friend? Remind everybody, and for those that have just joined us. So I'm actually like a content producer and video producer for um, <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Basically what I do for fun is what I do for real. Um, right. But I actually do it on a more serious scale. So I make social media content, promotional videos, tutorials, voiceovers for educational institutions and municipalities. So, so uh, awesome. or anyone who wants my services. Got it. Tell me, what do you do in your free time, Mister Sergene? So, I try to stay active as much as possible. Now that we're we've been quarantined, and I'm working from home. If I didn't have my seat cushions, I'd probably have hemorrhoids for days. So I try to be active <laughs> as much as I can. Um, and watching mindless entertainment, uh, just to, you know, relax a bit, not think about much, even getting some inspiration, you know, I get my best ideas when I'm half asleep because I'm not forcing myself to think about it. You know, are you one of those people that jump out of bed and that take a note, you know, or put it in your phone? Yeah, I have to really, yeah, I'm going to forget it. Get out of here. No, shit. yeah. And then I you wake up and babble, I got this amazing idea. Spaz, I'm tired. It's six in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm serious, man. It's the biggest thing ever. It's good. Dude. Sh 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 like, I'm not going to even go take it to the next level because I know you very well, but I just find it funny because I can see that happening. Are you married? I am not yet. Any kids? 
Uh, not that I know of. Remember, those are <laughs> those are two separate questions nowadays. <laughs> That's right. People have the kids before they get married, and then do. They, yeah. do. Are you dating anybody? Um, I'm single and currently mingling. Ah. No, but we're not going to ask her name. Um, she will stay private for now. Anonymous. That's right. Right. Tell me, uh, free time, you, you ever catch a movie? Do you like movies, documentaries, anything like that? Anything that's up your alley? Things similar to what you do? Yeah. Um, I like movies, but I have a movie commitment problem because I can't stay awake longer than 15 minutes um, for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm watching the movies like at the end of the uh, end of the day, when I'm like tired. But um, I love watching comedies, that type of thing. And, uh, you know, something easy going. You drink? Uh, I don't like to, but socially I'll, you know, sip on something just to have something. I'll, you drink you're, you're, you drink alcoholic beverages, I take it? Socially. What do you, What's your favorite alcoholic beverage, my friend? Um, I would say a Moscow Mule, which for people who are of drinking age and don't know what that is, um, basically it's a simple syrup lime, uh, ginger beer. And I think that's pretty much it. Maybe there's something else. In oh, vodka. No, Rakia? No, not this body. <laughs> nope. That'd be funny. If, if I wanted to drink liquid fire. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take a, I'll knock one back. What's your favorite food, buddy? Um, when it comes to like non cultural food or just in general food in general, and then we'll do some, something serving. Um, I like anything Mexican. I like a, I love a good burrito, some tacos. You know, are we talking Taco Bell? Or are we talking like no, 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 no? Like, we're, we're talking like uh, Maria's, you know, <laughs> Abuela's restaurant, that type of thing. Like the authentic Mexican. Why can't it be Pablo? Huh? Right. I don't know if Pablo's cooking. Right. So okay. So what about uh, as far as serving food goes? Um, I love a good shopska salata. Or a kupu salata. That, but I don't have this dish often. Maybe like once a year, if that. But like I love a karajorja vashnitsla. Because it's, it's... A, it's rare. And the fact that like it's fried meat with cheese inside. Like how bad can that be? That sounds good. Yeah. Fast food? Do you do fast food or no? Um, barely. But my go-tos uh, following the Mexican theme is Chipotle. Which is my number one. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know. Really? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Is it because, because of cilantro, maybe? I love Chipotle so much. I don't need that. I love Chipotle so much that when I went to London and was searching for a place to eat for lunch, I saw Chipotle on the map and I ate there twice. That's how much I love it. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm okay. <laughs> but now, Dobro, healthy. They're Kobayagi healthy. Don't true him. And you tea that she shops, cool, cool salad. I thought you were gonna say chavape, pescavice. That's such a typical answer, you know. Everyone loves chavape, so it's like I try to think of something that's a little bit more, um, I guess rare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You okay. know? All right, you listen to music, I do. What's your favorite song? Uh, favorite song changes by the day, usually, if it's like a new song that I like. Uh, in the moment, I play it five million times within that day, and then I'm sick of it. Yeah. Um, but I usually go back to some of the oldies, like, and by oldies I mean like Turbo Folk and like the mm -hmm. '90s music, some '80s stuff. But um, you know, there's some hidden gems like on some of the albums that you know are have been passed. You know, like the ones that people skip all the time. Like I revisit them. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I, man, I don't know where you pull some of these songs up for, in your videos, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I, come with that best much trash on that I, I have like a Rolodex in my head of just random oh. songs. And even in conversation, like if yeah. I, if I know of any lyrics that make sense with what I'm saying, like I'll sing it to you. <laughs> please do. Please don't. I'll, I'll forward it to the appropriate party. Uh, Tell me as far as uh favorite singer, male, female. Um, favorite singer, I would say for female Dragan Mirkovic. I grew up with her. Um, I, I mean, she's a Balkanska Zvezda, you know, how, you can't really go wrong with that. I mean, people would probably argue or debate between her and like Tietza. Tietza's great. Don't get me wrong. I just prefer Dragana. That's just me. 
Um, but as far as guys go, um, right now I'm a really big fan of Emir Julovic, okay. who I feel like is a, an amazing singer when it comes to li- live stuff. Even his songs are great too. Gotcha. Um, he, he's I feel like he's an underrated um, singer right now, but he's a rising star he's for sure. Young, right, he's a young guy, so he's got a long way to go too. So he's got yeah. a lot of, uh, room for growth. Definitely. Right, and those songs he's coming out with, he's like. He took me, but that's such a jam. It just amazes me that he's been around. He even won like um, the Bosnian version of Zvezda Granda, which is like Zvezda Moja Bititi or something like that. I think he won that. And he had like a few hits here and there and then disappeared and boom, Tsipola came out. <laughs> and that was that was massive. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Massive. You go multiple times a night. We used to play it. I remember I it's still and it's still big. It's still a jam. Yeah. It's not like it's gone, you know? Yeah. Um, do you travel? You travel often? Um, I try to whenever I have the chance, but the only place I'm traveling to now is from the kitchen to my bedroom. So um, <laughs> not going very far. You're, you're following the governor's orders, huh? Uh, well, to a degree. Just saying. Just saying. Where do you travel when you do? Um, I go to Miami a lot. Um, I love tropical places, beaches, hot weather, um, that sort of thing. I, I do like the sightsee and cities I've never been to or revisit cities that I love and do things that I didn't have time for before. Um, you know, going to different countries when I can. What so, is your favorite city outside of Chicago? Miami. Out. Okay. What about outside of the United States? Greece. Greece. I love Greece. Any it's specific beautiful. Greece or just as a country alone. Sorry. Any specific city in Greece or. Um, I haven't explored too much. I went to Athens and Kefalonia the first and last time that I went. And I thought that was amazing on its own. I only I feel like I scratched the surface when it comes to Greece. Mm-hmm. There's so many other islands. Um, right. So I'm hoping to go back, uh, let's just say, next summer in hopes that this is all done. <laughs> Nika Tsenezna, right? Right. Uh, tell me about uh, sports. Um, I don't really care about them. <laughs> Josh, Josh. You don't have a you don't have a favorite soccer team. Um, I love Zvezda Granda because that's the only thing I watch. <laughs> oh, All right, any pets? Uh, no one wasn't allowed to have them. Oh, who was? Which who, is fine. But whatever. Who didn't want it, mom or dad, or both? Uh, both. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, we just resanded the floor. We just got new furniture. Like the dog's going to screw it up. Like it's going to crap everywhere. Who's going to clean it up? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. It is a Oba Of course. Um, and since we travel a lot, it's like, who are we going to hand off the, the sure. dog to? Sure. It's it's rough. You know? you know? And those kennels aren't cheap when you, when you. And if you travel with the animal too, that ain't cheap either. Call like them. I don't want to be that passenger with a barking dog, like crapping all over the aisle. <laughs> that's not how it works but i understand what you're saying yeah like, one time when i was traveling like i was just was waking up from like i call it a daze because i can never fully sleep on a plane mm-hmm. um and i just looked down between the seats and i just see a dog's face in between the seats just looking right at me i'm like that is a huge beep <laughs> yeah i don't even know how they even got th- i swear to god like this dog was the size of a human it did not have its own seat. It was just like, you know, in that row, chilling. What airline? Uh, United. Is that your preferred airline? Yeah. Uh, it's not, but I've traveled with it a lot. Um, that, preferred airline? How can United not be your preferred airline? How? You, it's moment, it's moment, it's moment. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because Go ahead. One, Let me hear one, this. Okay. Story You're goes. Talking, and, United fanatic here, right? United Airlines. Oh, I've States. flown United like my entire oh, yeah. life. All right. That's right. But what happened was, and I did make a video on this, which you, it's like one of my earlier ones, when Spirit Airlines went on strike and all the pilots like didn't want to fly. Um, right. They canceled my flight and I called customer service. They ended up getting me uh, a whole new like reservation with another airline. Mm-hmm. And they ended up getting me Delta which I've never flown with before. Mm -hmm. So when I went up, when I went, went on the plane, I'll be okay. Well, fine. Free drinks. I'm used to that because in the snacks, because they're United, but you didn't have to pay for internet. You have free bags. You like, 
there were amenities that I'm used to paying for that were just given. And everyone was like so kind and there wasn't, wasn't any problems. Everything was on time. And I'm like, all my life, I've been so jaded thinking United is like number one. I'm just like, Delta, where you've been? <laughs> well, United is number one. Just so you know, <sighs> for the record. Well, I don't we'll see about that. But I'm a positive, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who, who's a, who, yeah, the survival of the fittest right now. Right. Tell me, you got a, you got a pet peeve? What's something that you absolutely hate the most? I hate when people and it, are... And if it's an individual, uh, let's leave the name you know, you know, off. I hate... Da, 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 da. Um, I hate people who are late and people who leave me hanging. Like, if I'm expecting an answer and things are time sensitive, like, I'm on pins and needles. All I want to do is, like, throw the phone at the wall. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Example one, number one. You tell me 10 o'clock, you call me at 11, I'm already in bed. But I hate that. Ko sad zna da ti sutra kao radiš? Come on. Ah, sad bez veze, pričamo gluposti, sada ne trebamo, sada pričamo o tome, razumiješ? Ne, no, no. Yes, I am fashionably late, right? As people know by our 8 o'clock start time, which doesn't typically start till 8.15, 8.20. Um, you know, but today we started, you know, at, like 8.05, and that wasn't my fault. <laughs> was it? Just saying, just saying. Where do you see yourself in five years, Bratimoy? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, what does the future hold for strategy in general, uh, social media? What does it hold, you know, for your uh, forte? I see myself treading in different waters, like um, acting for real um, or doing my own talk show, whether that be, I don't know what kind of scale that would be on, whether it be like a YouTube thing or like a video, like a podcast type situation. Um doing things where I call several guests and we kind of have like a conversation, a discussion, if you will. Um, 10 years down the line, I hopefully retiring early and rich with all my endorsement deals and sponsorships from projects done from now until then. But one can only dream the American dream. Right. But uh, when you, when you say these talk show hosting and whatnot, are you thinking American English market? You know, I am. Um, Cause I feel like I, understand english better i speak serbian i understand serbian which is all fine and dandy but it might not be 100 i don't necessarily understand their humor 100 i feel like i understand american humor more uh, american culture more Mm -hmm. um and growing up watching these things i understand it more therefore i see myself going in that arena um more Gotcha, gotcha. What kind of projects are uh, we working on here? I, I know you've got a laundry list of items that you're always working on. It's always something. Care to share? Sure. Um, I have a few projects that are simmering on the stove right now. One, I'm writing a script to do a uh, Belkin video game video. Um, two, I'm working on getting an interview with the Chicago Fire uh, soccer player for my new segment that premiered recently, Kositi, um, highlighting just successful people. Um, successful Belgian people within different industries to kind of showcase, Hey, that we're all over and it's possible to do non-traditional things that you might love doing and might not think that it's possible because in our heads we're engraved, uh, uh, engraved to think like you can only be a doctor, lawyer, um, uh, that sort of thing. The more, I guess, stable and, Sure. Job security, like yeah, job security, high money making type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that segment is called Costi T. Uh, yes. That was an original name, very guys, right? Yeah. That segment typically starts something like this. So. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just a general, keep going. All right, Costi T. Go ahead. And what else? And uh, recently, I finished the script for a more serious project. Seria is what it's all about. Um, I'm hoping that we can start production on this soon, but with Corona and all the guidelines that we have to abide by and all that stuff, um, you know, it's kind of on hold until we kind of get a hold of things and it's safe for us to all work together and be together. So are there deadlines to the end of the year? Is it, uh, is that deadline out maybe a year and a half too? Is it, how, how do those work with Kwasi T and, and the movie script and, and, and the Seria script, I'm sorry, and whatnot? Um, short term, I would say the Belkin video game video when 
I'll give myself like a couple weeks on that. Um, I want to let it marinate to make sure that a, I think it's good enough for my public. I just don't want to spit something out. That's kind of half done just for the sake of spitting it out. Um, and the other ones are just kind of like down the line. There's a bigger project. There's a medium sized project. And then there's, I don't want to say smaller, but more of a short, short term, um, for easy consumption on YouTube. Uh, do you like the YouTube platform? Do you prefer that? I do. Cause I feel like I have more control over that. Um, I'm the one uploading it. I'm the one, you know, uh, adding in the descriptions. I get to see the analytics of it all, get to see what you like and don't like what flies and what isn't flying. Um, and that sort of thing. So it's really helpful. Any other platforms that you'd like to maybe visit? I, this Twitch thing is huge now. I feel like TikTok Twitch is for gaming, is though. TikTok is TikTok is picking up like like you know. Do you style right? It, it, TikTok is popular, yes, but I feel like I'm. It's nothing different from like your Instagram stories or like Snapchat. It's short form or even Vine. It's short form video that people consume and people can swipe through all day and night. I feel like that's another chore <laughs> that it's like, if I have too many pots simmering on the stove, they're all going to boil over and it's all just going to go to hell. So I feel like I'd rather be established and good at this one thing and master that than be sort of, I guess you can say, underdeveloped across the, all the platforms. Like I'm there, but I'm not there. Right. Right. So be the best at this one. That one thing. Yeah. I got you. Not a jack of all trades, even though you are from technical aspects to creativity. I mean, just, you've got it all. So I trust. Thanks. So, uh, you have impressed a lot of people nationwide and, and I can hear them talking about it, you know, from, from San Marcos, San Diego, LA to Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Cleveland not to mention your home base here in Chicago. Bratimoy, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Thank you. Uh, we wish you all the best. I think a lot of people are always wondering, you know, uh, Chicago born, Chicago raised, like we said. Represent. Right? <laughs> right? You know, I had a Chicago flag at my wedding, right? And half the people thought it was an Argentina flag. I was there, and I don't remember that. <laughs> You're like... I think I was more focused on the cream of chicken that the, they were bringing me to the table than who were the bariatari and what they were carrying. <laughs> good, good. I'm going to make sure the Chicago flags has something to do with your your episodes moving forward, right? Yeah. Up, right? Anyhow, Surgeon General, again, hopes to begin his stand-up comedy tour in the fall of 2020, pending Corona. Yeah, I know. Right? Well, listen, good luck. Johnny with the Hi, boy. Uh, Thank you. You could, uh, where can they find your content? Surgeon, let them know. So you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Surgeon General. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat at Surgeon underscore General. Um, and hopefully we can connect soon. Surgeon General. Good night. Good night. That was our very own Surgeon General. Pakashi. Pričaj mi o njoj, pričaj sve što znaš, reci da li je boli, sad rastana kaša, ali nemoj lažno nagodati. And next week, next Monday night, pričaj mi we're going to be talking to Orkester Srbija from Phoenix, Arizona. They will be joining us live next Monday night. Znači, u sljedeći ponedeljak, svi ste nam dobrodošli. Uh, Ponedjak Orkestar Srbija iz Arizone. Lako noć, do vidjenja. And good night. Suze mi joj rekle sve.
iđaš ti je spinu, boje srećni kraj, da li joj na licu glista sreće skaj, i još uvek nije prebolela kraj. Iđaš ti je spinu, boje srećni kraj, da li joj na licu glista sreće skaj, i još uvek nije prebolela kraj. Pozdravi je, pozdravi, boli mi je ko pre. Ek da mogu poslati joj suze, suze bi joj rekle sve.